Okay, socialism or barbarism. A co-revolutionary theory for a left populist hegemonic struggle movement. Chat six, the final chat. Not the final chat, but like. Of the series. I wasn't finished. I, I hadn't <laughs> let go of my breath. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined the suspense. <laughs> uh, last time out, we played a thought game because we know nothing. Uh, we, um, we imagined how capitalism might have developed out of feudalism. Uh, but we used, we did use Ellen Meekson's Wood, Origins of Capitalism, and uh, David Harvey's uh, possibly Marxist co-evolutionary, co-revolutionary theory, or co-evolutionary theory for, the, mm. for that, for the historic act. But this time, uh, we're going to use the framework of that co-revolutionary theory uh, to imagine um, to, to identify where we are today and then imagine where we're going to socialism or to barbarism. Uh, shall we start in the, in the same place as we started last time? Uh, start at the start? Yeah. We're we'll take it away. We, we sort of started. My name is Simpson Bartholomew Ginny. That's backward and that's that the capital B. Don't know the rest, but <laughs> I'll be surprised <laughs> if anyone knew any of those words. Uh, technological and organizational forms of production, exchange, and consumption yes. is point A of the seven moments of the uh, co-revolutionary theory of change. It's a, it's, a, it's a theory of change. I think that's without any sequence uh, or hierarchy or importance the, the the theory of change is that for fundamental paradigmatic change um such as between feudalism and socialism um things need to the change needs to happen upon these uh moments and of course you can pick out moments um arbitrarily i assume if you were oh. to be feel so inclined but I guess these ones are substantiated, at least Harvey claims, by having their own internal dynamics. Okay. Um, yeah, being interdependent, because they are society. They are the totality of society. Um, so in terms of, um, in terms of Har oh, Harvey outlining this, uh, this theory, um, he sort of critiqued movements to date as sort of siloing along one of these moments um and in, a, a particular a particular social movement or interest group um will of course be focusing on their situation and say like point b is relations to nature uh so obviously something like extinction rebellion or greta thunberg um, who is her own social movement is um, focuses there but the theory is for fundamental change and say on the same theme as um, uh, ecology uh, global warming and stuff uh, what's the phrase don't uh, don't change the climate change the system right <clears throat> um, and the system is the infrastructure and web of networks, uh, branches of power, uh, whether it be directed by people or by processes, because um, of course capitalism is a logic um, process that has its own life acting through these moments uh, and therefore is systematic, change the system. Uh, I think really socialism should only sort of be directed against people as such when they are defending capitalism no i would can't imagine all capitalists would defend capitalism if if someone came along and said hey all us boyos and girlos and people here uh want to do something different and it's a really good idea you know some yeah. capitalists might go oh yeah no that looks great that essentially gives me 
all the things I want, but without all the stress. That's brilliant. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's only when so. the people shooting back at the anti-capitalists, they're the only ones that, that need, that are antagonists. Basically, no, no, no one, no people or person or class really should be an antagonist in terms of a popular socialist movement, just the ones that are defending that which we wish to change. Yeah. Uh, so the system. And yeah, I think these, these seven points outline, outline that system. Um, and yeah, back to Harvey. Harvey sort of critiques this tendency for social movements to, to silo and to, to sort of focus, prioritize their moment. And where, of course, a movement with such specific expertise should prioritize in terms of action, they shouldn't necessarily prioritize to the point that it negates the possibility of their efforts spilling over or for others, other efforts from other m- moments spilling over and sort of causing mutual effects and reinforcing this more fundamental, greater change. Um, and that that's the sort of importance, I think, and, and why I like this this sort of schema. And I mean, if if I still can't find where, but if this is um, if this is what Marx, either specifically or in an indirect way, identified as how capital worked through um, feudal society to establish itself as paradigmatic, then probably need to look at that as a socialist movement. Um, I think there was there was one more point I wanted to sort of throw into that, um, but I can't think of it right now. So we'll just move swiftly along. Um, yeah, so back to the first point, the technological and organizational forms of production, exchange, and consumption. Um, so while I think last time we got to, we got to particularly talk about the sort of the, the rural roots of those organizational forms of production, the change and the impact, how it spiraled out from there to a capitalist situation that was, well, production was organized because of capitalism um, in a very specific way where everything was seen as a commodity um, competition was an imperative uh, market efficiency was an imperative thus the imposition of competition production was changed fundamentally uh, of course that's no longer the case 400 years on 300 whatever um, capitalism and societies like continue to develop and I don't know I think let's see you got any takes on where we are today with in terms of organizational forms of production or any other moment of that moment? I mean, what is it? We've got production is global, global production changes at uh, chains. Um, oh, I just realized what I wanted to say at the, at the end of the last one, but never mind. We'll get to it somewhere else okay. in the, uh, somewhere else in the chat i'm sure um we've got yeah global chains of production um exchange is and this brings in uh, that like like, at this stage with the amount of technology in operation it it it's fully determining the organizational possibilities for production exchange consumption um so yeah so you've got your global production chains exchange like we touched on the two weeks ago, um, high speed digital currency, um, God knows how many billions is transferred every fucking minute or some crazy staggering um, figure. The way that capitalism is run digitally, techn- the, the technology and the organization mm-hmm. exchange is just it's it's beyond us we like we have no grasp of of what's happening um one of the big things that we need whether you're i mean it'd be great 
from a socialist perspective, but the bloody, but I don't think it exists anywhere, is a, um, is a good contemporary outline of capitalism or contemporary economy. And I th- look what the financial system has so diffuse, um, fast paced. It just, no one knows. No, no one, I'm not sure anyone really has a grasp of, of what's actually happening. Um, yeah, it it almost sort of be, it's it's sort of morphed into this quite um, quite uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Emporial? No, it's sort of it's almost um, oh like ephemeral. Va- it, yeah, ephemeral. It's almost vaporous in in a sense that again, as we were talking about last time, I think yeah, we 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 sort of touched on um, these cases you find of like people gutting entire buildings that it's it's replaced with essentially you know giant server farms yeah um and and i guess the more the most important thing there for uh, well the the thing i would the point i would extract from that being um <clears throat> you know the step up from just even having a, a brief understanding of how all this stuff is moving about so quickly um i.e you know um huge amounts of data or data wealth um not just understanding it, because I assume if you have an understanding of it, you're probably right at the heart of it, or mm. you're you're analyzing this stuff from from externals or as an external, but more so as well, owning that architecture, um, you know, creating like own, owning that act, those conditions at which this stuff is actually being 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 done. Um, I yeah, it's it just it becomes yeah, as I said, this kind of vaporous way of of doing something that i i don't know i can't at, at any point of ownership yeah. as well it's probably so sort of such a small compartmentalized moment of the, the bigger picture like you're you're looking at point from point uh, a to point b maybe point z but like yeah. fucking everything else is going on around that no um, absolutely i mean from, from a perspective of where where you know basic basic commodity digital ownership is something that on you know at our viewpoint we can we can kind of look at that and go ah you know do i do i own this thing i buy and the progress progressively the more digitized we get um that is less and less of the case actually yeah what you have in your hand is very rarely actually in your hand or or it's more what what's on that disc uh is actually mostly in it's on a server somewhere and mm. you definitely don't own that. Um, so, you know, push that up by hundreds of, I don't know, well, I don't know how you Many. sort of quantify this as such, what we're actually discussing, um, how you would quantify that. By many. Mm. Uh, uh, one, one, um, one, one of the sort of evident manifestations of this process is, of course, the um, relating to point A or moment A is that, um production while it's shifted towards asia um consumption is still highly located in uh europe and america and you know, this is the, that's that's of course like the, you know it it seems sort of normal oh. in the everyday um but that you know that's it, that it, that is like historically that's fucking bonkers. Um, all this wealth is produced somewhere and shifts somewhere else. And then when you think um, when that consumption in Europe and America is so driven by credit, uh, eventually you would imagine, um, particularly as production perhaps moves towards Africa, um, that consumption might center in in Asia, particularly China. Um, yeah, perhaps maybe we should go through each one just I- in terms of, of where things are now. Obviously, uh, the next one being relations to nature. <laughs> yeah. It's a daily, daily headline. Yeah, mm. it should be a daily headline. Anyway, relations to nature are obscene. Capitalists, the logic of capitalism or capitalist society has absolutely no respect as is yet. This is late capitalism, apparently, and it is yet to internalize the costs in its terms, the costs of um, of of the ecosystem. Um, how much 
does heating a house, driving a car, flying a plane, shipping something across the sea actually cost? You know, if 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 the economy was the sort of as a unit was the was the sort of every every moment of wealth and use value was just added into a lump and block and broken up into shattered pieces and that was currency um those things would be many many little splintered books <laughs> a hell of a lot more expensive than they are now if 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 the costs to the con uh, to the ecosystem in terms of our use value of water and air and growing food um let alone in terms of in terms of mental health and being able to go outdoors uh, having green space having open space having like, feeling sort of well about oneself when they go about their daily life uh, without even internalizing that the price is phenomenal none of these costs are internalized into the economy um america does its damnedest to make sure that burning fossil fuels is as cheap as chips mm. um and on a side note amazingly the other day you had to pay people to get rid of oil mm. <laughs> what the fuck um please take my barrel and 50 quid um oh yeah they're they're paying you to store it right on your yeah basically or something there yeah <laughs> so uh, um this is relations to nature uh yeah. the logic of capitalism manifests in such a bizarre way that we just we seem unable unable to imagine how we can escape this disgusting treatment of nature and you know we there's seven billion of us there's about uh, 200 countries it's complicated it's a complicated conversation to have but like when you're talking about over the next century just like human existence getting to the point of becoming like incredibly precarious after thousands of years and only up to the last hundred if even years that this situation has really come to bear that's you know if, if you internalize it into into a healthy economy in the last 50 years we've probably spent the next 500 years worth of i'm pulling a figure out of my ass there but like just hypothetically the last 50 years we spent a whole 500 years worth of living on the planet we've lived at such a high level we've 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 just i mean like people talk about that already in 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 terms of the in terms of our grandchildren's generations like we've we've spent their their allowance yeah, and they're going to have to spend like the allowance of generations like that's going to run out Do you know uh, yeah no absolutely we, we we've already spent the inheritance um <laughs> yeah um and that that you know that our, our, the way we see nature like is reflected in and by the way we see people uh, again the commodification of people the social relations between us the um i remember reading a piece a few years ago by branko milanovic um who's an, uh, an economist looks into inequality but not necessarily socialist um uh, he just made a really nice point about living in New York and seeing every single person in terms of their, in terms of their um, use value uh, to his future exchange value or um, engagement in, and everyone's an opportunity. Everyone's a, and I don't think it's as bad as Europe. You get the impression over in America. I mean, like stories of Hollywood, like you know, people, young people go over there and they're trying to make their way and famous or whatever I mean, just, i'm just talking cliche trope here but um it sort of illustrates that how that logic is um affects the way people see each other and like we brought up last time the oxton bar and grill michael or mark atkinson or whatever the his oh, rant yeah. with the nurses and you know it's just it, it comes back to that point i made about how ill we are in the head like this yeah. this makes us ill we don't 
our social relations are decrepit uh, because of capital. We, we, I don't. I, I live in Manchester. My home is in Ireland. Everyone I knew is there. I left almost ten years ago because there was nothing going on there, and our social relations are just mangled by this by this process, um, by the impact it has of of money flowing through a region, and on it goes in its global pursuit of uh, reproduction, uh-huh. um, reproducing itself, and the people that it leaves behind. Are, can be fucked and the benefits of that pursuit um, go to so few so when you think of how they see people that they must have seen the big short at this stage <laughs> they must be aware that they're, the things that they do the practices just just investment whatever if you've got any to invest just the act of investment um you've got to see yourself as like a unitary part of this this bigger whole but involving so few people it it as a process dumps and decimates people and i remember i remember like being in the 80s and obviously i was very young in the 80s but trying to get my head around this idea of thatcher destroying the minor communities. First of all, I was like, who the fuck wants to be a minor? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds like a shit job. But yeah. <laughs> but like so so her moving everything down to the city, uh, you know, didn't see, sound like, well, now you don't have to be a minor. But like oh, of course, those people, their life, their livelihoods, not only their livelihoods, sorry, but their lives, the communities they lived in, everything that they knew. Mm-hmm was just stolen from them, just smashed to pieces. Yeah. And um, all in the name of progress. Hey. Sorry, that's yeah. in there. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, for, I think it wasn't, it wasn't until I really got a full grasp around just the impact that something like Thatcher's effect on, 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 uh, on unions, on community, uh, on, on, yeah, again, everything that led up to to the to the strikes. Um, it wasn't until I got my head fully around this just just how much her, or at least you know, well, yeah, I guess the neoliberalist logic um, splintered and drove those wedges in between that sense of community, yeah, uh, exactly. that sense of you know social social solidarity, regard you know, regardless of it being a. Um, uh, necessarily something that was, you know, uh, out like like vocalized as like you know, because I, I I can't imagine you know in any way shape or form that everybody was articulating their relation to each other as being something political or it was something common radical. sense exactly. And it's innate. It was yeah. And and when you when you when I finally got my head around that idea that the the actual impact was a splintering of a sense, a logic of community with people, like a sense of community. Um, I think that was where, yeah, my brain kind of switched on at that because I probably would have had the same, same thought. I would have been like, yeah, but like now you can go work in the city, get a job as like a disc jockey or something. Like, <laughs> like you can go, you can go work in a cool pub and like specials will come play and it'll be fucking awesome. Um, when yeah, but obviously that's not the fucking case. And yes, I was also too young to, to fully have my head around that stuff. Um, I know. Hey, even even if that is the case, like the uh, still that we've got a great idea of the ability for us all to uproot ourselves, but without the connections, uh-huh. this amazing amazing figure um, I th- I feel illustrates this. I could be wrong. I don't have the uh, the the behind the scenes on it. But um, Norway exhibited the lowest reported cases of mental illness up until a point where Oslo started attracting larger and larger um, population. Really? So this process of you, you, you're not only you, you're leaving people and you, you're leaving established connections with people and with nature when it, 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 through the process of urbanization and we're becoming ill. And I'm not I, I'm not saying that. Um, I'm not suggesting here that well we'll get we'll get to what we're suggesting later um but quickly i'm not suggesting that we all need to be agrarian ruralists um sure. we just need it's 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 yeah 
quite often people take the empirical fact of something and its antithesis like that and go, well, capitalism, capitalism isn't bad because you have what we have today and it's not perfect, but it's better than this uh, illusion of an agrarian ideal. And it's like, well, no, no, yes, this is, these are two, a historic and an empirical, both empirical sort of instances that we can allude to and one's better, one's worse in, in, in different respects and vice versa. But the issue is that the arrangement between them because of capital is what determines... Um, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> what determines the, the sort of the, the benefits or otherwise. Mental, 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 mental illness, illness. I was about to say. Mental conceptions of the world, uh, embracing knowledges and cultural understandings and beliefs. I think like last time, uh, the, the, the focus for this point was John Locke and his philosophy, the theory of property and how it imbued itself through uh, so many points on this m- move, moment. Not a movement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, not a movement yet. Um, mm-hmm. But here, I think like our underlying one, uh, we brought it up before, the Mont Pelerin Society. Lake Geneva, God, uh-huh. um, <laughs> Hayek and the likes, and uh, they're they're sort of they they sort of injected the philosophy of possessive individualism, the the idea that um, an individual there's no society, an individual it an individual's outcome is an eight to its own self as a as a unit as a self-contained unit the uh-huh. the ambient effects education socialization family wealth whatever doesn't have an effect on the outcome it's what's in this person possessive individuals what they possess innately yeah. um and they they sort of they um they work that into a political economic theory um neoliberalism and um, that was picked up later, uh, and that that's that's really and like you touched on a minute ago, the the, the common sense. Um, Thatcher smashed the, the that democratic uh, social democracy, the common sense through that period of of solidarity, and no one was no one suspected people. I'm sure they, they might have, but it wasn't prevalent that people suspected um, benefit recipients, welfare recipients of. Uh, the same things they do today, and this is the this is the sort of the cultural war that um, that Thatcher enacted, and no doubt Reagan in the U.S. Um, the suspicion and the total the, the the positioning of welfare as something just like when you look at your neighbour, you're not working, you're on benefit, you're spending. The money I should have, but had to pay in tax, and that's disgusting. Yeah, uh, I think yeah that that I think that that was something I I remember growing up hearing, um, and I think relating to that that it's it's almost like it relating to that that idea of like um, possessive individualism, like it's it's almost. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, well, I mean, obviously it is reflected in that common sense that we're talking about, but I remember that it, it was, again, it was always, uh, I was never sold the idea, so to speak, as being like a part of, like, I'm part of the part of society that is working and we're, we're doing the thing because we can, you know, we're, we're getting our shit together and yeah. we're, you know, putting Funny our rooms. Things- Exactly, and we're you know keeping our arses clean, and we're like going to fucking work, <laughs> you so. know, like you know. Whereas, but I was never sold that idea. It was always very much me as an individual. Um, that person, you know, is not working, and therefore they're spending the money that you've earned. It was always very particular to me. Oh yeah, and it from they're yeah, taking it right out of your pocket. Are you <laughs> while you're at work, they're going into your room. Exactly, like a like a sort of like a like a really shitty tooth fairy, and <laughs> like and but but again, I, the I remember of tooth fairies. the shittiest of tooth fairies. Like, but like, but but that was the the point was um, my point is rather um, that yeah, it was always it was always very much put in front of me as something that very specifically affected me as an individual, and I in I never 
actively internalize this because luckily enough i i had you know i had parents who weren't fucking like who, who weren't absolute fucking scumbags but um and they you know never sold welfare as something that you know was some kind of like heinous thing you should, yeah, yeah. You should never do and they're all they're all um uh scroungers like i was never sold that kind of ideology at home uh which was which was which was great but it was part of the discourse around me and i remember being young and kind of trying to internalize these ideas as this is something that affects me and i and you know i i could see how someone could start to go down that path not seeing themselves as a part of a group that are you know there, there's no an antagonism formed between two people there yeah. it's you the individual that's being fucked over by another individual that we can point a finger at and um i guess what i'm just trying to sort of articulate is like i can uh, i can understand the the sort of insidious strength of the of that i of that logic absolutely yeah, as it yeah, yeah. really kind of get, gets in between all the gray matter you know when yeah when you're not exposed to maybe it's just me but has this gotten super loud all of a sudden maybe it's just me maybe. but um none of these ideas are necessarily obvious do you know what i mean like it, it takes a it takes a sort of a mental shift for this shit to to click uh, i find the the logic the discuss the logical conclusion of of what we're talking about there is uh what we're seeing today um the uh, anti-immigration uh sentiments um dick Ducker dobbs and all that sort of thing and this this shameful divide between native working class and um immigrant working class um, and the idea, the idea that the amount of wealth poor people are somehow siphoning off is affecting your wealth is absurd. If you, if you, poor people never made people poor. Rich people make people poor. That's what, that's the definition. Like They're rich because they have the wealth. You're poor because you don't have the wealth. Just because they're from another country doesn't mean they've taken the wealth. If they stay poor, if they get rich, then we 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 take out our marks and go. Hey, hang on a second, that's not happening though. The rich, that's that's where the wealth is. Come on, like, um, and that. I think earlier in one of the chats, and it wasn't elaborated enough, was the point that um something that we talked about before but we didn't really go into was how the right their populist movement is based on um initially it's based on sort of democratic appeals so like a, any there's a dishonesty basically to 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 a right populist moment where um and this is the, i'm linking it back to what you were just saying um uh, what we were saying about immigration is because what you what you were sort of outlining uh, was the sort of the logic um, defining social relations. The right wing ideology, the populist ideology, will start with disassociating neighbours from neighbours who aren't going to go, who aren't going to batter each other for being scroungers. Hmm. When immigration comes along, you start seeing small acts of violence uh -huh. and they start es escalating and the insidiousness of of right-wing ideology is this this sort of escalation this slow like uh, how to cook a frog sort of slow build up of heat of revealing the, the next like the next barrier or frontier that has to be overcome in pursuit of whatever the goal is um so the, the the reason that there's, there's such an opportunity right now is that much of the rhetoric used by the far right in both the UK and the US is it, it, appeals to de, de, democracy. But you're seeing sort of, I mean, of course, they're alongside anti-immigration sentiment, uh, opening up the space for, for that increased antagonism and violence. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that will just, the emphasis on that will grow and um, will become more sort of virulent. And yeah, as it, as it becomes the focus, we'll, we'll just sort of, on the street, the, um, 
the legitimacy for a sort of open assault on other uh, will yeah will increase i guess um so the, and this is yeah because because we're talking about the mental exceptions of the world um this is how the logic will spin um and and yeah so the the actual moment as described by harvey or marx or by harvey for marx uh, includes embracing knowledges and culture understandings and beliefs so like implicitly um while obviously that's framed in terms of the covert evolutionary theory what what we would like embracing knowledges etc um it, 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 the mental conceptions of the world implies this the common sense the the world view that's prevalent in a society of course there's going to be deviances from it but it's like the differences in social democracy to neoliberalism there's a prevalency that affects how people act on the street that the the space that opens up for people to behave in a legitimate manner uh, oh, okay. is defined by by these things <sighs> labor processes and production of specific goods geography services or effects so yeah i mean this obviously links in with um with the the organizational of uh, production exchange and consumption or particularly of production and exchange um who who could have sort of predicted when in in marxist time the labor processes uh that we have today um we, we've touched on it in the chats in terms of um youtube and content particularly as as a way of making a living uh producers are the are the laborers the working class um the, we have the means of production in oh. a sense uh, sometimes um the ways the sort of clean cut definitions between labor and the means and their access to the means of production of has totally sort of changed uh, if you think of, i suppose about the the that transition that we touched on last time um the peasant had the access to the means of the land the capitalist imperative pushed in the case where they were pushed off pushed them off the land they returned to the land as a wage laborer so didn't have access to the land directly were still the direct producers but they were paid a wage for what they produced alienating them from the production um industrialism roughly the same situation the means of production was owned by the capitalists it was just a factory instead of the actual land um producing or uh, not producing but um enhancing uh-huh. the the products the raw materials uh whereas now um you know it's it's a hell of a lot more complicated um and this and this is certainly like a, a topic that 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 would need that we require like a an in-depth comprehensive extensive and intensive analysis of uh, labor processes um in terms of production of specific goods and geographies services or effects i mean like touching on the geographies like just the dispersion of production and how labor processes are affected on one side of the world by events that happen on the other side of the world um it just it feeds into that complicated picture that we painted at the very start of this outline um the institutional legal and governmental arrangements people often imagine that democracies are are capitalist and not democracies are not capitalist but um what the fuck are you talking about um the logic of capitalism has spun its web holistically across the globe governments no matter what their form um engage in it they have to um the soviet russia could have been an entirely different thing without the imposition of capital and colonialism um and empire um in terms of institutions and legal situations the legal situation is entirely a sophisticated um bourgeois um infrastructure focused on defending um private property um in terms of institutions um, you've got the sort of the contemporary versions of the 
the Bretton Wood ones are like the sort of the prominent things, the um, the uh, World Bank and the um, WTO, World, World Trade Organization. Um, where is my mind today? What, a, what an awful moment for me for it to take a vacation. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's the there's the sort of I don't know where we are today with them. I know a few years ago they began sort of emphasising inequality. Um, but say like they're they're sort of when they really came into their own was like during the eighties and the Chicago School thing, um, running around the world, uh, indebting in very common development, developing countries um, into the into the system. You can have all this aid, but uh, high, it's, they're, it's all highly conditional. Um, so I mean, this is this is this is how the sort of uh, how they fast tracked the logic of capitalism in some countries, gave them a heap of cash, but sort of made sure that what was done alongside and with that cash was that it would come quickly shooting back out uh, into the hands of those that um, gave it in the first place, but along with literally any other residual wealth that it could sort of capture. Um, sure. And I guess it's, process. it's locking you, it's locking you into, into that, and that yes. into that, into that logic, I guess, if you, if you, have a, a ton of conditional, um, conditional capital kind of foisted, you know, happily, fo- see, or seemingly happily foisted upon you. Um, obviously, for you know a lot of a lot of uh, people or societies or communities, that 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 appears to be oh brilliant. Now we can we can produce, we can innovate, we can we can do all that stuff. Um, but obviously, as, as you pointed out, those conditionals then sort of dictate or i would assume and again this is coming at it from a very limited understanding of 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 some of this some of the topics that we we touch on specifically regarding things like economics um but i would kind like based on some of the previous points we've made about understanding you know how certain logics uh, can be kind of instigated or like implemented i guess into one psyche i guess on a grander level I could see absolutely how something like the known, like understanding that underneath all of your innovation is this like large pot of debt um, would begin to, I guess, decide how you, you began to innovate because obviously the idea is that you need to be able to make back, you need, you need to be able to fill that debt and, you know, also fulfill whatever extras that are meant to go along with that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you probably still want to see something for all your fucking efforts uh, to innovate society. So maybe, I don't know, it's, it's a theory. I'm pulling this out of my ass, but it locks you into the idea of how you would have to innovate. So your decisions are already, in theory, made for you by the fact that yeah. you took the debt in the first place. I don't that's know. the power maybe. of the logic, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's bollocks. <laughs> No, no. I mean, yeah. that yeah, that's that's one perfect way of putting one of the one of the other ones. Like for the initial investor, you you give someone cash and you tell them you want it back, and this is and give them a sort of a roadmap on how to do that. Uh, they are no, never mind them. But that money that that money's been given to someone. They set up all this stuff. Um, it's used basically to create separate laws. We, we see it here in, in the UK in the third sector um, where the government, um, the Tories are trying to, um, or they were until the, <laughs> the world ended, um, sort of marketize the third sector. So obviously in, in, like the third sector lives on grants and um, funding schemes. But um, I can't remember the term of it, but it was, it was so, social lending, basically. That might actually be the term for it. Uh, I was at a conference and about funding, and there was a, a Tory minister, I can't remember who it was, um, but he was there saying, like, oh, yes, we give the, we give the 
this is what we want to see basically uh, and everyone else then talked about okay social lending is amazing um, blah, 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 blah. but before I before I elaborate what that blah, blah 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 was the last person who spoke was from Leeds and he was amazing he said no actually we've done none of this uh, we've like self-funded and we've put in um, uh, asset-based community development uh, we've really like we've really sort of mobilized the resource the inherent resources in the community and and the pictures he was putting up on the slides were, was this like totally idiosyncratic um, heterogeneous colorful people-based picture of community development the blah 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 from everyone else before him uh, were the recipients of social lending and they all described situations which was basically they they got they got a million you know they got a loan they got lots of money uh in a, in a, in a loan a low interest loan but um the conditions um that came with that loan necessitated like the, the, the pictures that they were looking they were all big red brick dull buildings with a community center inside and a fucking spar or a costa on the corner Absolutely. and this is this is their model so the the um, it's a social enterprise yeah. excuse me the money uh, totally homogenous um everyone who works in the shop um the, the 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 sorry the profits from the shop sort of help sustain the community center every person that's oh yeah you're, you're employing people in the in the community but every person that's like making fucking minimum wage in a spa are close enough to minimum wage the, the way capitalism works is like whatever profit happens and yeah okay so profit from that instance is going into the community center but ultimately it's a spa and it's a business and surplus value the margin is still the fucking top dog and that margin represents surplus value it's, it's value from nothing it's value on top of the value that's being created by the actual producers the people serving um people in the marketplace and um it's being siphoned out of the community and it's undermining the wages of the people earning those wages so it's no it's no community development whatsoever so you you put that you bring that back to the 80s to the to africa to latin america um with the not the world bank it's the other way around isn't it the wto is like a bank and the world bank is like a trading organization um so the wto go around giving these loans putting the money in basically the money flushes through the system and rinses everything that's just it, you, you shove the money into every crevice you go here you can do that here you can do that and it, and, and and people make a business out of it um they have to give the loan back through the surplus value that they've made because of probably high interest on those loans. And um, there's no sustainable um, business put in place. There's no sustainable economy put in place, but the money fucking comes back out of it. And it just washes everything and transforms everything. And, 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 and then the wealth from that area is extracted. I believe this is neo-colonialism. And, um, instead of holding a gun to your face and that, but that's isn't that that's what meeks and meeks and wood was saying it's um in in like sort of like the pre-capitalist i mean i know early colonialism was still tied to capitalism but there was still they were getting away with plenty of extra economic ways of colonialism um just brutal wealth extraction but because capitalism spins um its logic neo-colonialism is is this e strictly economic way of extracting wealth um and getting people obviously the person who facilitates it the local person gets gets well uh, well looked after but nothing compared to the, the the full extraction of the wealth in that local area um another interesting institutional um development actually is the eu um i think there was a guy released from Mussolini's jails. Speroni might have been his name. Um, after the war, and he was a federalist, and he was sort of like, of course, the EU. The the, the roots of the EU started in the wake of the war, and um, it was a purely economic situation there with coal and steel agreements um, for the rebuilding of Europe, and. Um, I think by the 50s, I think he was sort of like 
drawn in by his mates like ah oh, come on come down to this club we've got and, uh, <laughs> see what you see what you got to say but basically i can't remember the details but he his perspective i think he was jailed by Mussolini for being a federalist and possibly like when i say federalist there might have been virgin towards sort of anarcho syndicalism uh, but his vision for europe would have been a sort of uh, a national federation i mean in terms of sure in terms of how to say these things in that given moment. Uh, it could have been regional, could have been industrial. But his, his, his view was a main trunk of political possibility in the EU at that time. And it wasn't until the voting processes continued and the development continued to the 70s when neoliberalism, obviously, really sort of the economic principles started impinging and pushing this political socio-political or social political possibilities out and it was the Lis- not the lisbon treaty the master treaty in the 90s that consolidated this decision so you've got that 15 20 year period or you've got like a 15 20 year period before where that was a real possibility an equal possibility and then you've got a 15 20 year period where that was slowly waning and being pushed out and then maastricht made the eu and consolidated this neoliberal institutional form that we that we that we're still developing today um but i mean like the, the alternative potentials uh it was really sad to sort of come across that but anyway that's this is we're talking about the the power and of the logic how it's how it's moving through each moment and the final moment is the conduct of daily life that underpins social reproduction and um i think we were a bit puzzled by it last time particularly with how to define social reproduction but um i think i think here i will i will go for like just care reproduction the ability to reproduce but i think that under socialism should should extend to all sort of sustenance subsistence care everything um and it's shot on the idea that like um stay-at-home parents that's that's not paid paid work i mean in and out of the situation no work is paid but it's just done and um but in this situation in capitalism reproduction is yeah it's just it's the bottom priority and you see the struggle with the nhs at the moment at the moment always um of course it's just talked about a lot at the moment having been yes underfunded but more importantly this doesn't matter how much funds a government any given government puts into the nhs in its current form because its governance model is swiss cheese just like the um just like the 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 wto thing from the last moment the money comes straight back out and rinses the value rinses collects the um any any inherent wealth and just extracts it and that's that's why it's so as amazing a job of course that the people working for them do uh, it's just so lacking in capacity to actually do the job that the people that people anywhere deserve uh from a public health service and um yeah i think i think maybe even this might be our hinge moment how do we see how do we see ourselves moving forward um social reproduction i think as we go back through these and hopefully that i think that just took up roughly an hour a little bit less hopefully this this back will be about an hour as well um 